We all know that having children is expensive, but what should we actually do with our finances before they start school? What should we be planning for? What should we be considering? And what steps should we be taking to really safeguard our finances moving forward? Hi there, Jared Brown here, Australian expat financial planner, Thank you for tuning into my video today. Today, I'd like to share with you seven simple steps that you can be taking with your finances to really safeguard yourself, protect your finances before your little one starts school. So that's usually going to mean before they turn three or four and those international school fees really start to bite. You might have heard the stats that the average child is going to cost you half a million dollars just to get them to age 18. Well, if they're attending international school in Singapore, you can probably double that figure. So let's dive into some of the tips and work out what we should be thinking about, what steps we should be taking when it comes to our personal finances. Number one is saving for school fees. Now, we all know school fees are expensive in Singapore. If you look at the international schools, most nurseries from age three are going to start at somewhere between twenty dollars and $30,000 per year. And then it's going to continue to, uh, to climb from there. You've then got things like excursions and uniforms and IT equipment and books, stationery, all the other stuff that does add up quite quickly. So when your little ones arrived, or even before they've arrived, if possible, start putting money away regularly for those school fees to come. If you can get to a point where you're one or two years ahead in terms of those school fee savings, that is going to give you a significant benefit going forward. Having a child can be a stressful enough time, but at least if you know that you have that school fee money set aside, you can at least reduce that stress and those worries. Now, by saving those school fees on a regular basis, it also gets you into the habit of that money leaving your account. So that might mean putting away an extra $2,100 a month or $2,000 or $3,000, or maybe even more, particularly if you have multiple children, into a separate account each and every month that's ready to pay those school fees. So that's number one. Number two is reviewing your home loan structures. Now, if you have home loans, investment loans, equity access loans on your properties back in Australia, it's a great time to review these before the school fees start. If you have a dependent or multiple dependents, that is going to reduce your borrowing capacity in the eyes of the Australian lender. But if you also have school fees at two, three, four, five thousand dollars a month on top of that, then that is also going to significantly impact your borrowing capacity. So before those expenses do arise, consider if you want to tap into equity, if you're looking to buy investment properties, restructure your loans, refinance, get a discounted rate, review your options before the school fees start. That's number two. Number three is your emergency fund. We all know that we should have somewhere between three and six or nine months of expenses set aside in our rainy day fund. Now, school fees are coming. We know that they're going to be somewhere between 20 and 40 or $50,000 a year. So we need to be ensuring that that money is actually set aside in our emergency fund. So if we're working on six months and we're paying an annual fee of $30,000, well, that's two and a half thousand dollars every month or $15,000 over six months of additional savings we should have in that emergency fund. And yes, it should be sitting in cash, doing very little, hopefully collecting a bit of interest, but it's designed to be an emergency fund. That money should not be put at risk. It shouldn't be in the stock market. It shouldn't be in some private equity fund or crypto or anything else. It needs to be liquid and there for emergencies. So that's the next one when it comes to planning ahead for that little one starting school. Number four is ensuring you have set up a dedicated education savings fund. Now, this could be a bank account. It could be a portfolio if you're thinking through uh, or thinking about rather university and secondary schooling and you have many years ahead to plan for that. But have a separate account so that you can track that separately. If family members are contributing to it as well, that can all be parked aside for that one sole purpose. You're not tapping into it. You're not able to access it with your ATM card. It is there separate, locked away, and ready for when those school fees begin. 
That's number four. Number five is getting your personal insurances in order. Life insurance, total and permanent disability, critical illness or trauma cover, and of course, income protection. When we have a a child or children and school fees begin, we need to be thinking about how much of those school fees we want to be covering in the event something happens to us. When it comes to life insurance or even total and permanent disability cover, I personally would want to be ensuring that the remainder of my child's school fees could be paid for in the event I'm not around. Now, yes, if that's international school at 30, 40, $50,000 a year, yes, it's a lot of money, but these are the things we need to be planning for. And by locking in term life or term policies, particularly in Singapore, but in Australian dollars, if you plan to return to Australia, that can be an excellent move to avoid those premiums continuing to increase year on year. So that's number five. Number six is budgeting for those school extras. Yes, of course, all of those additional expenses will add up. If they're catching the bus, factor in another few thousand dollars. If there's an excursion, again, additional funds, tutoring, extra sports, whatever it may be, all of these things are going to incur additional costs, particularly if you're an expat at an international school. So make sure that you're not just budgeting for the school fees alone, but you're budgeting with that additional funding on top of that. So again, make sure that's going into that separate education fund, set aside, automatically deducted each and every month into that separate account. That's number six. And of course, number seven is not ignoring the currency fluctuations. Now, if you're thinking you're going to be back in Australia, going to secondary school in Australia, well then we should probably be investing that money in Australian dollars. Because why on earth would we be investing in the Singapore Stock Exchange or the New York Stock Exchange and having Sing or US dollar exposure when we're going to spend that money in Australian dollars? We need to be very mindful of those currency fluctuations and plan ahead where possible. Now, of course, if we have no idea where they're going to go to secondary school or university, then global diversification can often be the answer. But make sure we're giving that one some thought don't ignore the impact of currency fluctuation, fluctuations over time. So there you have it, seven simple tips when it comes to managing your money, safeguarding your finances for your little one to start school in the years to come. <music>